Can you hear me? We are live here on Facebook and we are about to get started. So grab your dinner, grab your ingredients, and we will be on the way in just a minute. Can you hear me? We are live here on Facebook. Awesome. Welcome to the digital dinner party of Stephen Crofts. And uh, this is Food and Art from Our Table to Yours. We're so excited that you joined us for night three. Uh, let us know in the comments if you have been here for the other nights, if you saw what was being cooked last night and what was being cooked the night before. Let us know. Uh, we're really excited to be here. I'm Denisa Young. I'm a Friday Arts Project staff member and a relational artist. And I'm so excited to be your MC for the week. I would like to introduce you to our chef, Stephen Kratz. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, can you see me? We can see you. All right, so I'm Stephen. Um, I was involved with the very beginning of Friday Arts Project back in 2006 um, with several of my friends at Winthrop and uh, I'm so pleased to see what's happened with it in the years since then. I think it's a great thing for our community. And yeah, so we're going to make some shrimp and grits tonight. Um, so a couple of things. I, I wanted to have something that had a South Carolina connection where I'm from and then also uh, a place that influenced me a lot, New Orleans. So what we're gonna do is make New Orleans barbecue shrimp, which has nothing to do with barbecue, but that's what it's named. Uh, and then some creamy Edisto Island, Geechee Boy Mill grits. So uh, yeah, and then put those together. So we'll get going. First thing is get wild caught American shrimp. And uh, uh, wild caught American shrimp, get them with the shells on. So I've gone ahead and removed mine. And what we're going to start with is I've got my shells here. Uh, and I've got a pan warming up. Let's see. Oh, you can see the ingredients on the Friday Arts Project page. We've put them there. So what we're going to start out with is some bacon fat. Okay, I tell us, is this, so this bacon fat, how long have you been collecting it? Well, it doesn't last that long um, if you use it a lot. So anytime I make bacon, I just strain it with a little mesh strainer. Uh, this little job into a mason jar and keep it in the fridge. It cooks really well. All right, in the pot. And what's going to happen is once we get that going, I'm going to put in some garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up some garlic. Now this is eventually going to get strained, all of this. So are you what would be sort of like a roux or is this something different? So what we're doing now with the shrimp shells, we're going to make like a shrimp stock. And uh, I mean, a, yeah, a shrimp stock that will turn into a sauce. So this is going to get strained. Anyway, so I'm just roughly chopping up the garlic, putting in the bacon fat. Also, let's just comment how fast this man is moving. I think he's a little nervous that he has an hour to make this, di this dish. Oh, yeah, OK, yeah. Yeah, tonight we it feels maybe a little bit more of like chef or uh, something that has a time constraint. But we know Stephen can do it. Let us know in the comments if you are rooting for him. I think he can make anything in any amount of time. Or if you're booing and hissing. I'll never tell you if they boot or hiss at you. Let us know. Let me get this. So he's dropping the garlic in the pot with the shrimp shells and. It's a bacon fat is what's happening. Yeah. And you can use olive oil if you have to. Um, Notice the southern charm of if you have to. He just told you, you best not be using no olive oil. Get that bacon fat. Well, I mean, I've got friends who are 
vegan AFs, and I love them. <laughs> Emily Doling is hissing at you formally. Good, good. Diversity is uh, important. Uh, adversity, I meant. Sorry. <laughs> also, Aaron um, says to quote Rob, Sch Rob Schneider, you can do it. Yes, very good. That's appropriate for this, as that quote comes from the water boy. Yes, if I'm not wrong, Carly, the shrimps are deshelled, and now we are just working with the shells themselves. Is that right, we Steven? Are. We've got shells here. We're going to put that into this. So we got some garlic going in there. Just going to let that brown just a second. So okay, starting to brown. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. Did you all hear that nice sizzle? Okay, you got a question here. Who is the better cook? John Brock, Kirk Irwin, or Steven Kratz? Who was the first option? John Boggs, Kirk Irwin, or Steven Kratz? Uh. The question is being asked by John Boggs, if that changes your answer. Uh, I think Dan the Pigman is the best cook. Whoa, he picked an option C, Dan the Pigman. Give it up in the chat if you know who Dan the Pigman is and maybe you tell us what the last thing you ate from him was. Okay, so we wanna, we're trying to saute these uh, shrimp shells just to bring out flavor. We're gonna get them nice and red and then we're gonna add some liquid. Some liquid. If you're just tuning in, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're Friday Arts Project, and this week is a digital uh, fundraiser called Food and Art from Our Table to Yours. And tonight, uh, we started about six minutes ago with a live cooking situation from down the street here in Rockville, South Carolina, in the house of the Kratzes. And Stephen Kratz, who is our uh, one of our co-founders of Friday Arts Project is cooking shrimp and grits tonight with some other fancy bells and whistles. And we're so excited to be here. So if you are in the chat, welcome. I think we have people tuning in from all over the United States as well as El Salvador, our glitter patron. She's from El Salvador, which is really exciting. Uh, living in El Salvador, not from there. But um, we're back in the kitchen and uh, it's steaming over there. Steven, what's happening? Okay, so my shrimp shells are getting nice and pink. Um, they're starting to look good. So the next thing on our list, we're gonna um, put in some aromatics. We got lemons. I'm just gonna roughly kind of chop up this lemon and throw it in there. Uh, we're gonna put in some liquids. I've got some chicken broth. Um, put in about a cup. And if any of you ever watched the old Cajun guy, Justin Wilson, that had the PBS program, he said, anytime he used Worcestershire sauce, he said, gotta put in a Liam Perron. <laughs> so, um, the guarantee. So we're gonna do a cup of that. Take a long time. Wait, oh, pro tip. That's cool, I can talk. Um, if you know Stephen Kratz or have been to his house for a dinner party in the past or have eaten something from him, will you let us know what it was in the comments? And if you haven't eaten from Stephen Kratz's kitchen, you are sorely missing out. All right, um, we're gonna put in, just got some thyme and rosemary from the garden. That's just gonna go in with this stuff. And the heat's got to come up high. Um, we're going to get this boiling. Again, this is all going to get cooked down. This is going to be the sauce that goes on top of our shrimp and grits. So it's just kind of the first thing we've got to do. You say um, this, step, this is the longest step? Yeah. Yep. This is the longest thing throughout. Now, I went ahead with, can you see this red pot? Yeah, I got um, two cups of water and two cups of milk in there. And I'm going to add, that's going to be for our grits. 
Uh, I'm going to add some cream cheese to that just to make it ridiculous. But you know, this is a special occasion food, so okay. Um, just do a little hump like this much in there. Probably like a fourth cup. Half cup, yeah, sounds good. Um, I think we're going to add some butter in there too. Where did I say two to four tablespoons? Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get that going. Just have it on the back burner. Because these shrimp, I mean, uh, these grits will take 25 minutes probably to cook really well. You can go anywhere and get good stone ground grits. Um, you know, uh, Cotton Hills down here in Chester, they do good ones too. But uh, I love Beachy Boy. Stephen, can you tell us a little bit about how shrimp and grits came to your house or your table? Well, oh, wrong pot. Um, okay, that goes in there. Uh, shrimp and grits is ubiquitous in the Carolinas. Um, it's also really popular across the South. It's a big deal in New Orleans at this point as well. And um, there are all kinds of things about how it came to be. Um, of course, corn is uh, a New World plant that was used by indigenous cultures and First Nations people. So that was going on. Shrimp was just in the creeks. Um, Michael Twitty, who wrote this, The Cooking Gene, which is a great book, um, has a few drawings in it. Uh, what Stephen didn't just mention is he illustrated the <laughs> illustrations in that book. And a little birdie told me today to bring this up. So I'm glad you brought it up yourself. But Stephen Kratz is an incredible illustrator. Uh, it is his daytime job, his part-time job, his side hustle, his main hustle, his all hustle. Um, and he did these incredible illustrations in this book. And tell us a little bit more about the book, Stephen. Yeah, so uh, Michael chronicles his family history from Africa to America and uh, looks at issues. He's looking at all of this history through the lens of food. And uh, anyway, Michael talks about how there are African combinations of corn and shellfish, especially one in Mozambique that looks just like uh, shrimp and grits to him. So, um, but we started to see it come onto restaurant menus uh, in the 70s or so. Natalie Dupree said that uh, all these restaurants claim that they cook their grits in beach water, and that was their secret. <laughs> It crystallized in North Carolina. I, I got all this off the local palette um, magazine. There's a great uh, article there with some of this history, but um, Bill Neal at Crook's Corner really cemented this and made it the huge Southern dish in fancy restaurant culture, from what I can tell. So. Wow, that's awesome. And I think, I don't know, not to go to anywhere but what you just said about this. I think what you're doing too is bringing some racial reconciliation into the kitchen by honoring different food cultures and then, um, yeah, getting to share them with people who maybe wouldn't normally get to eat them. Well, there's a lot of cool things happening in the culinary world with this food that we've enjoyed for generations. Uh, we're finally beginning to see the people who created it and where it came from. Um, this is an example of amazing things coming out of really hard uh, situations and something, the, the banquet of creativity that is Southern cuisine is a testament to the uh, endurance of oppressed peoples. 100%. And I think as we talk particularly about Black people and African Americans in our country and in the South, um, in light of recent news, I think we, we'd be stupid not to mention it. And so I think, yeah, as we are artists who are called to represent and who are called to action and as givers and hosts and people of hospitality, I think we also need to open up our tables and our conversations and our ears and our hearts to different types of things and types of people. And I've seen you do that, Stephen. Uh, through Mardi Gras, I think through the way you and Erica live your lives uh, with a very open door policy, which I think is just really exciting uh, to be in community with you and and as you have the, you know, the veins and the root of of pretty much starting and launching Fred Eric's project 
11, 12 years ago, you know? And so I think it's cool to see how things are shifting and changing even this week with food and art. Thanks. So a couple of things, we've got some um, Slap Your Mama uh, and some cracked pepper and bay leaves, that's all going in. You can use Tony Saturates or whatever you got. Also, I want to put in, what do we got? Like a cup of wine, half cup, back into this, just to cook down. It's just going to add some more flavor to this sauce. Um, so I think that's everything that's going in here. So I'm going to leave this alone and just let it reduce. Eventually, this will just get strained off. So now we can start with the other stuff. I've got the butter, the cream cheese, the milk, and the water going for the grits. So I'm going to just go ahead, now that this is getting bubbly, and uh, measure out the grits. How many so if you're making right now, how many people would this feed? Oh, uh, four to six, maybe. maybe. Well, yeah, let's say four. And you, you scooped out just now the, the garden from the milk cream cheese mixture, is that right? The what now? You just, you scooped out the herbs that were steeping in the milk. Oh, just that just got in there by accident. Okay. All right, <laughs> cup of grits into the hot mixture here. A little more. Um, and so we're just gonna stir these, get them, once they're to a boil, we'll reduce it to low and just let that simmer for a good little bit. And how's then everybody doing? <laughs> I, yes. How's everybody doing? Let us know in the comments what's going on. What are your thoughts so far? Is this the way you make grits? Is this the way your mama makes grits? Is this the way your grandma makes grits? Have you even ever had grits? We have some people tuning in from different parts of the world that are not from the Carolinas. So uh, let us know if you've never eaten grits. We might have to know what's happening from the Kratz's kitchen. Does everyone know what a grit is? Ooh, that's a good question. Grits are corn. <laughs> okay, so, good. ahead. I was say, if you're just tuning in, uh, we got one pot of milk and cream cheese and water getting ready for our grits with some butter. And then in another pan, we have shrimp shells with Worcestershire and garlic and some wine. Um, did I miss anything? We got aromatics in there. We got lemon. Got lemon, we got bay leaves, uh, thyme, a little rosemary, a little sloppy mama. <laughs> also, uh, Sharon would just like one grit, if possible, just one. You may have one grit, Sharon. Uh, my mom also says she can almost smell this deliciousness. So you are transcending uh, the time and space of the screen and of time zones right now. That's great. So um, in Creole cooking, you've got the Trinity, which is celery, bell peppers, and onions, and garlic is the Pope. Just saying. Garlic is the Pope. I mean, let's put him in charge. I think the world would be better. Of course, anytime something calls for a clove of garlic, you need to use six to eight. A hundred percent. And then you be careful who you talk to after that because your breath don't stink. Eh. Who needs them? <laughs> you heard it here on Food and Art. Who cares if your breast smells like garlic? Stephen Kratz doesn't care. Nope. Not once, not never. So we got things boiling and steaming. We got things going. The grits are in the pot with the milk and the, and the cream cheese. What's the next so, step, my friend? The next step, I mean, these... These grits are gonna take a while. That's our deal. Um, so the next step is gonna be sauteing shrimp and doing the barbecue shrimp thing. Um, but we need some time. We need some time, okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your illustration work and maybe 
does it relate to food? Has it related to food? Yeah, so um, my day-to-day -day work is and has been for the last 10 years with the Culture and Heritage Museum in York County. So I do marketing things with them and uh, graphic design, that sort of thing. And I also do, um, on weekends, I do some illustration work. And so uh, occasionally, yeah, I've done food books like Michael Twitty's that got the uh, James Beard Book of the Year. And, um, and other books, novels, book covers, nonfiction, um, things like that. So it's a mixed bag, uh, CD covers. You guys remember CDs? I don't think anybody here remembers CDs, if I'm honest. But I dropped um, Stephen's website in the chat. So on Facebook, you can click over to that. And while you're listening to us, and as the grits are getting prepared to be eaten, uh, you can see all of Stephen's incredible work. Like he said, he's worked on a lot of book jackets and CDs. And he also has a Dove Award, I believe. No, that's not true. <laughs> Dove Award nomination. That's, I mean, it's basically a Dev Award. Um, when that came through, I felt like Han Solo, when C-3PO tells him that he was accepted into the Ewok tribe, <laughs> and he just kind of looks to the side and says, wow, just what I always wanted. So, <laughs> that's kind of how I felt when that came through. That's awesome. Also, your good old pal, Leanne Dole, is here. She just joined us. Leanne. Leanne uh, brought me into the cult of Curly Girl Hair Regimen uh, many years ago. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you were on the Curly Girl routine if, or if you know what that means. Also, while we're kind of at a lull, um, Stephen has helped uh, be a voice and uh, consultant, I would say, for our uh, head creative director, Sarah Kennedy Irwin. She designed this amazing cookbook. And last I checked, we only had five left, which is incredibly amazing. Um, also, if you pre-ordered yours and you would like to pick them up, you can come tomorrow, which is Thursday or Friday to the studio at the Geddes Center. I'll be masked up and gloved up um, and I can give you yours, but I will be here from 6.30 to 7.30. It's a small window. Uh, but if you want to pick them up tomorrow, Thursday or Friday, 6.30 to 7.30, you can do that. Um, just hit me a, a quick text or message or somewhere on the Friday Arts Project uh, social media. You can let us know that you'll be coming by. But uh, it has 54 recipes, over, I think, 49 contributors. And there's art. And this, um, some of the recipes you saw this past week are on here, which is really exciting and a lot of great work. So thank you, Sarah, for designing this and thank you Stephen for consulting her on some of the work that was in it. Yeah, all right everybody. So what we're gonna do, I, I failed to add a little salt to the uh, grits. So I'm just gonna add a little salt and breaking up the clumps. This is on low at this point after it came to a boil and any clumps, you just go ahead and break them up and let that continue to cook slowly. Um, my shrimp stock is doing really well. It smells incredible. So I'm just actually going to cover that. I just got a word in on my earpiece that we only have three cookbooks left. So I don't know, someone who's watching this live stream, there's uh, 32 of you here. So if you already got your cookbook, let us know if you pre-ordered it. If you haven't and you want one, will you be one of those three? That's the question of the hour. Also this week, um, as Stephen is out of frame, we will be continuing food and art tonight and tomorrow and Friday. That's what comes after Thursday. And you can join us, uh, FridayArtsProject.org. And you can look at our options for presenters tonight. Sarah Kennedy Irwin will be having a conversation with me in her studio over at The Perch. It's gonna be awesome. She'll be talking about her journey in painting and graphic design also. And then tomorrow night, Stephen will be back with us to talk with Kirk Irwin, our director, and Chris Fox, our other empanada man, uh, with John Hendricks, which is going to be a really exciting conversation. And Friday will be our final night of food and art 
with Josette Arabaye of Hasak Gunev. She'll be coming all the way from Izmir, Turkey, which is going to be awesome. And then also Kirk and the Dolings will be cooking this week. So you're not going to want to miss it. You can see the full schedule at our website, FridayArtsProject.org. Back to you, Stephen. What's happening now? We're uh, in a moment of waiting. Great news. <laughs> we so. love to wait. Let, what's been your quarantine hobbies, Stephen? Well, right away, I got really into um, going into my cookbooks. I have all these fancy old cookbooks that I've, I always ask for a cookbook for Christmas. So working through those, doing really elaborate things, which was really fun. And then after a while, uh, I think that the exciting thing became birds in the backyard and uh, got really into feeding the birds and all that stuff, identifying the birds. And then as things started to warm up more, I always get an itch in late April, early May to catch reptiles and amphibians. So that has been the sort of mind domination of the last few weeks. So. That's awesome. How has the art making practice or the cooking practice shifted in quarantine for you? Well, uh, not terribly much. I mean, I, I think we, we cooked a lot more than we normally do. Um, but one thing was, we're really social. We're used to having like 30 people here uh, every week. And so there wasn't that opportunity to have people in the house. But we found ways with our neighbors to uh, hang out across the yard, bring our meals outside so that we could see each other safely. And um, so that has been a really great gift um, and has kept me from going insane as a high extrovert. Yeah, that's awesome. I have spent many, well, three Mardi Gras on Stephen's street. And I would say if we could give an award to the best neighbor, it would probably be Stephen Kratz. Oh, but, or my neighbors. No, Actually. I think it's you. I think it's you who neighbors them well, um, which is really exciting. And I've gotten to see relationships grow even over the past two years that I've lived here, uh, the way Mardi Gras. If you don't know, Mardi Gras is a New Orleans celebration. I think the world knows what that is. But here in Rock Hill, it takes place in Stephen Kratz's front yard alongside his many neighbors who love him and let him wreak havoc on the street. <laughs> but usually there's a really cool bike parade. Um, there's a big gumbotron. Stephen and the community kind of rally together and tables and tables and tables of food are served out of just a place of love and generosity. I think it's one of the coolest things um, I've seen and Sarah and Audrey, some of the people in our community decorate the place really well. And Dan the pig man comes out and roasts the whole pig. Uh, Craig Morrow helps. It's just a really cool depiction, I think of where the world meets Rock Hill, South Carolina, and how the arts and food and culture kind of culminate into one big gumbo pot. Thanks. It's a fun time. He's um, not very good at bragging about himself, so I'll just keep doing it, and he'll just keep saying thank you, and then we'll talk about it later, but I'll just keep showering the love onto our sweet Stephen Kratz. I'll tell you this. This year, uh, we had 225 people show up. And it was just a few weeks before the pandemic was announced. And um, we had people get off the plane from Italy uh, and Detroit, hot spots. So I think if, if it had been shifted a couple of weeks, we could have been a vector for massive infection. I'm glad that didn't happen. Wow, we could have been the center of the corona outbreak uh, at Mardi Gras. Not something I want to be known for. <laughs> no, definitely not something you want to be known for. Um, also, so, what, before you move on, sorry, Sweet Wendy Cole says Stephen Kratz is a great, is great at creating community, and I could not agree more, and we're going to barrel past that beautiful compliment and let him do the next step, because I know he's itching to move on with the cooking. Well, I was just going to say, uh, with the Friday Arts Project community, food has always been at the center, or at least a place where uh, we gathered. That was how it started. We uh, got together at Durango Bagel and um, <laughs> hung out and talked about art and what it meant and who we wanted to be as people. Um, I've got this quote from Robert Ferrar Capone. Someone uh, has my copy. I don't know where it is in the world. 
And everybody has it. You know, I would love to have stuff from the lamb come back to my house. But uh, Capone says, food is the daily sacrament of unnecessary goodness ordained for co the continual remembrance that the world will always be more delicious than it is useful. There mm -hmm. is uh, an extravagance about beauty, whether it's at the table or on the canvas, um, it is something that uh, we might think is un unneeded, but it is needed. Uh, one really poignant uh, example of this to me is the story where the woman comes to uh, Christ and has this nard, this expensive ointment, and the the uh, his followers are like, wait, hey, we need to sell this and use the money for something useful, and, uh, and he's like, no, leave her alone, and uh, that was the only thing that was dressing him when he uh, sacrificed it himself. So, you know, there is a profound beauty to uh, going above and beyond sometimes. Um, buying the good shrimp and feeding it to some special people that you want to have at your table, sometimes uh, it is important to have a little extravagance. 100%. And I know that you believe these values and the mission and vision of Fred Ayers Project as you helped create them. But Fred Ayers Project's um, vision is beauty exists where truth and goodness meet mystery and art advances a celebration of that intersection. And you cannot celebrate without food. Am I right? That's right. Am I right. That's right. I mean, I believe that the trajectory of humanity is uh, going in the direction of feasting. Totally. Uh, I want to be feast a feast person and raise little feast people. So, all right, let's check on the grits. Grits are looking, you know, they do that thing where they get kind of plump delicious and you just have to break them up, but they look pretty decent. They're starting to thicken up. So I think what we should do soon after I get anything that's stuck to the bottom is um, we're going to start up with our shrimps. Nice. You got some other comments in. Greg Ross says, hi, Stephen, watching on your on our TV, of course. Anna had to help me set it up, which is so great to get people watching from all different types of devices. Greg, welcome. Uh, you're getting a lot of comments about what you said in the poem you read. So we're doing the right thing, Stephen. We're on the right track. As people who need verbal affirmation, we're doing it. You guys, Uncle Greg, last weekend, we were in the swamp and we had an incredible moment. Uh, in the middle or late at night, we went to this boat landing and there were three or four of us and we were looking in the water's edge and then this one kid, Parker, he said, I think there's an eel in there. And he went to grab it. I'm like, he's not gonna catch an eel. And what was it? It was the most uncommonly seen snake ever in the Southeast, the rainbow snake. It, it was the Holy Grail and it was a magical moment. And Greg was there. That's awesome. <laughs> so, Stephen loves to okay. spend time outside. If you are a patron of his Instagram or Facebook, you will most often always see a snake. As I was telling someone the other day, if that kind of thing freaks you out, it's the fascination is less with that animal in particular and more with the fact that as a predator it indicates the health of the wider ecosystem. When you take something out, uh, the rest of it falls apart. So we've got to take care of what we got. Um, and shrimp is a sustainable fishery, and I have some here. <laughs> what a smooth transition. It's like we've uh, rehearsed this whole thing. What is right, so sauce doing, the shell sauce? What's happening in the next pan? It's for me? just sitting. This is ready to be strained. So it's good. The grits are almost there. What we've got here is shrimp. What I did was take the shells and just for nice presentation, you leave the tails on. This takes a little bit of time, but it's okay. And if you cut a vein, I mean, a, a little slit down the spine, you get more surface area for the delicious sauce. So what we're gonna do is put this on kind of high with some olive oil. 
Or if you have ghee or clarified butter, that would be really a lot better. But I didn't have that. So just going to coat the bottom of the pan with olive oil. Did you guys see that wrist action? That was incredible. That's a man who's been in the kitchen a lot. Or a man who slipped. <laughs> So that's got to get hot before we put our shrimps in. Where did you, I heard today that you went to many stores to acquire these, as my father would say, scrimps. Oh man. Yeah, I did. I went too early. The um, boats, I mean, the, the trucks from the boats had not gotten me in. <laughs> the boats hadn't arrived uh, to inland Rock Hill, South Carolina yet. The, so the greatest um, story I've got about seafood, we, uh, one time, Dan Huntley, it was 4th of July, we wanted to do a big crab cooking, and Dan said, well, I got a line on some crabs, I got a guy, and uh, so we got in touch with the guy, and at the last minute, and he's like, yeah, meet me at this gas station off the interstate, and we got there and it's getting dark. We had a ton of people here waiting to come eat them. And so it was like 9.30 or so. We we're supposed to have dinner at 7. And eventually this dude comes up in a van and he's got two giant bushel baskets full of these amazing crabs. But it, was, it seemed really sketchy. But it turned out to be really good when we ate at like 11 o'clock that night. And um, we finished... Uh, the rest of the weekend we spent just peeling those crabs and making John Fox made the best crab cakes ever. They're nothing like your own. Well, 100% because I've never made a crab cake. Okay, so this is hot. We are going to put this in here, the shrimp. And shrimp don't take long. So, going in. Wow, I think I've got too many. Could you ever have too many shrimp, honestly? Well, I mean, I want them, I want some surface area against this oil. Barely know what I'm doing here. It's okay, you're in charge. This is your uh, this is your deal. So everyone thinks you're right. It's true. So we just want to get these till they're pink. I can't stand not to dust them with a little bit of slappy mama. Are some of the influences you learned to cook from your time in Louisiana? Yeah, definitely. Um, so when I was in Louisiana, I was an artist in residence with a, a church and community development association. And I got to live in this amazing uh, loft above a community center that was used for all kinds of places, but uh, the people in that community cook. And um, I think about like William Joyce's um, stuffed bell peppers. One time I was there for Thanksgiving and it was just, they had this Thanksgiving pot it was incredible um, with gumbo. And um, so that's where I learned a lot of stuff from just kind of paying attention to the church ladies and uh, the eighth ward where I live. That's awesome, and how long did you spend there? I was just there for a year, so not long, but it was long enough to really corrupt me in the best way. <laughs> I feel like you're a sponge, so I bet that year did you uh, more than just 365 days. That is an incredible city uh, with a generous spirit. It has changed my life. So I'm waiting on the shrimp now to get hot again. When I put them in there, it really cooled the pan down and I wanted to get hot again um, before I flip them over. And so just in that pan, we just had, we just coated it with olive oil, put a little bit of Slappy Mama, and that's it. Cool, and then we still got the grits are finishing up. I also noticed like about 20 minutes ago that you're wearing a shirt that says grits. It's not the food, it's the band. I did, uh, I know them, they had a CD. And then- Oh, also this is the food. Oh. 
This is a Geechee Boy shirt. They have great apparel and food. Oh, small plug. That's hilarious. Um, and then in the silver pot, you also have the shrimp uh, sauce is still boiling. Simmering. Correct. Correct. Simmering. So what we're going to do there is just leave it alone. When the shrimp get ready, when they're cooked, we're going to incorporate this to the shrimp. Awesome. That's going to be great. So basically, is would you say this is like a, for anyone who hasn't eaten shrimp and grits, I guess we'll get to the plating, but basically the, the sauce and the shrimp are going to be laid on top of the grits, like a sweet bed, and they'll be tucked in before they get eaten, correct? You said it beautifully. <laughs> this pan is like in Antarctica. Oh, has it heated up yet? What's that? It hasn't heated up yet? It has not. Well, yes. it wouldn't be food and art if we weren't all in it together, in the words of Zach Efron. He's our uh, unofficial patron of the week uh, from High School Musical, but I'll leave that there tonight. Buy a gas range or cook over <laughs> a fire. It was raining, so we couldn't cook over a fire. Or a Um, uh, best, what, what, what's that? Oh, I was going to say, you got a question in from your good old pal, Kirk Irwin. He would like to know where was the best place you ate shrimp and grits? Oh, man. Um, I have to say, the best shrimp and grits that I've ever had, I made with my brother uh, on Edisto Island. Yeah. So when I go to restaurants, I get other stuff. Shrimp and grits is like home food to me. hundred percent. That's my restaurant strategy. I'm like, let me get something at this restaurant that I can't make myself because why would I make something? I'm going to make it the way I want to make it at home and for like less money. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Um, where would you recommend people to try Southern food? Like your favorite Southern restaurant in Rock Hill? Hmm. Good question. Uh, Rock Hill's like, seems like there's a lot of turnover in restaurants all the time. Um, I love the Ebenezer Grill for a good hot dog. Um, I love- Yeah, for your cash, if you want Ebenezer Grill, it's for the, the, uh, the cash carriers. I really love to eat fried chicken at the uh, Exxon beside the National Guard Armory with the tank outside. And I love hot dogs from the gas station beside Evan Ford. Those are probably the best Southern food places in Rock Hill. I also love that none of these gas stations have a name. It's just based on location. <laughs> I feel like in Stephen's like a uh, phone book of places to eat. It's like go down the street six paces. Look to the left. If you see a yellow trash can, you're on the right path. You got it. <laughs> How's our Antarctica pan doing? I don't know what's happening here. It is like just not happening. You got some smoke or steam. I know how to talk. Yeah, it's just taking a while. Wait, I hear some sizzle. They're getting some color. Sus, yeah. What, what you thinking? I was thinking of a food story, but I forgot it. <laughs> what did you guys have for dinner last night? Last night. I made some uh, ramen last night. Ooh, yum. That sounds awesome. Do your girls like all your fancy cooking? All your girls, all three of them? Della is more adventurous than Lena. And Erica, what's Erica's palate like? She's pretty good, but whatever. Yeah, that's a story you haven't touched on. Uh, what was it like falling in love with the beautiful Erica Kratz before she was Erica Kratz? 
That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I always bring this up and this is always Steven's response because his love story is so sweet and precious. And I think it's for an in-person conversation maybe. Well, it, a lot of our uh, connection happened through letters while I was in New Orleans. So it's a romantic place. Steven's also a romantic guy. Thank yep. you. That's another one we're going to blow past. It's good to be here on Food and Art from our table to yours. We're making grits with shrimp from our very own co founder, Stephen Kratz. Hey, are there any questions or prompts? We got no, people are being pretty quiet. They're just mostly complimenting you, patting you on the back, telling you that they That's love good. you. It's a very warm uh, audience tonight. But if anyone has any questions about what Stephen is making, about anything we've talked about so far, um, let us know in the comments on Facebook and I'll bring those into the conversation. Mostly everyone is drooling. That's kind of the consensus that they wish they were in your kitchen eating what you're making, Stephen. So I'll tell you one story. Um, a few years ago when we did our first uh, food related conference with Brian Arts Project, um, we had Molly O'Neill, the late great. Uh, she came down from New York and uh, helped us put together this amazing event and it was our keynote. And Molly was just a fireball of insane energy and she knew everybody in the world. And, um, but she told me this story about years ago when she was a young uh, writer starting out. One second. Okay, these look really good. They got hot quick. I'm gonna come back to Molly's thing. Great I news. Gotta, I, I gotta do something. All right, we're gonna strain this shrimp stock stuff into our pan here. So all that goes in. Now that the shrimp are pink, so that we just the need to let them. This pot had the shrimp skins, some Worcestershire, some uh, lemon some garlic and some chicken stock, right? That's correct. I'm gonna put this aside. So we strain that, we're putting it over the hot shrimp and this is what's gonna make the sauce of the shrimp and grits. Yeah, we're on the home stretch. We're on the home stretch. Okay, you got some questions about grits. What is your favorite brand of grits? I know you mentioned it, but plug it again. Peachy Boy or Cotton Hills. Yes, if someone could drop that in the chat who's orchestrating, that would be great. Um, also, do South Carolinians put mustard in their grits? I've never heard of that, but you know, there's a mustard situation in South Carolina. There's this part of the state known as the, the mustard streak. So, uh, or it's also known as the Dutch Fork, where you had German immigrants come in and the mustard came into that area of the state. So I'm right at the edge of it where I grew up in Lawrence. It comes up into Greenwood. Uh, and there were families in Newberry and uh, like the Wises who had a, a barbecue place, still do. They influenced the people in Lawrence County uh, at Hickory Hills, which was my barbecue place growing up. And so they had, uh, even though we were kind of really upstate, we we're right at the edge of the Dutch Fork, so we had mustard-based barbecue sauce, and there was mustard in our hash, so that was cool. Wow, um, that sounds awesome. But yeah. I don't know about grits and mustard. I hadn't heard of that. I never heard of that either. That someone else, Aaron, says that just sounds wrong. With an oh lord in front of it, which I agree. You also have a question. What is your stance? I don't know if you all realize this, but on digital dinner parties, food and art, we like to bring up some food controversies. So, what's your stance? on cream versus tomato sauce for shrimp and grits? Well, okay, so this is not a super traditional South Carolina shrimp. This is like New Orleans barbecue shrimp and grits. So I don't really have a stance. I've made shrimp and grits, uh, the Lee brothers, let me just grab this book. Uh, they have, the Lee brothers have tomatillos in there and it's really good. So, I've had it all kind of ways. I would eat tomatoes. I would eat cream. I feel like tomatillo makes anything better, to be honest. It's such a good flavor. Yeah, this one was like you um, 
you put them on the grill and let them get charred and they blend it up. So the question about the about the mustard came from a North Carolinian trying to stir the pot in the chat over here. So we love controversies, food controversies here at Food and Art. Um, but apparently they were served at a wedding in, in Spartanburg and the grits had mustard on them. That's fascinating. I would love to know more about that. That's from Christopher Ger Gertner. Maybe I'm not saying that correctly. Oh, hey, how's it going? Um, he um, also said that he just wants to poke some North Carolina fun into the South Carolina pool. He says, vinegar, baby, vinegar. I love North Carolina barbecue. I feel like we don't have a lot of good, like, Southern South Carolina barbecue places in Rock Hill. Like, we got the Dixie Pig, and which is a great restaurant, super good. But I feel like we don't have, like, barbecue, you know? Barbecue restaurants are in a weird transition, I feel like. Uh, there used to be all these barbecue shacks in little communities, and now it's getting to the place where if it's really good, if you're smoked barbecue, I mean, there's still some places in the woods that do it, but uh, now there's like, it's happening in a fancier setting, mm. and the little guys are going away. Uh, hard to know how that's going to happen, but the best barbecue at this moment, I would say, is uh, at Dan's house. <laughs> A hundred percent. I think I was like, oh, I just need to know Southerners who make barbecue. Like I'm wasting my time knocking on restaurant doors for this stuff. Yes. Whether they are restaurant chefs or home cooks, that is the tax that you need to, to take. Find people who do it. A hundred percent. We're getting close to the hour here on Food and Art from our table to yours. And the shrimps are looking steamy and pink and very sexy, if I do say my, so myself. How are our grits doing? Grits are good. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of more butter into the shrimp, and I'm gonna stir in a little bit of cream. Oh, that was a question earlier from Fred Dan, where does the cream come in? And here it is, making her debut, debut, to debut, the, the here cream. Here she comes. Here she comes. Just a little cream. What did I say? A half cup? It might not even be that much, really. But we'll just kind of work that in. And again, we gotta let this kind of reduce a little bit. What is the thickness of the sauce of the shrimp we're going for? I think I would have gone a little more thick, but uh, you know, it's gonna be good if the, the grits are very thick, so it's gonna work. What, what would have thickened up the grits sauce? Uh, what would have thickened the grits? I'm oh, sorry, the shrimp sauce, pardon me. Oh, boiling it down more. So it's a, it, we're just racing against time right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found even when I said, hey, can you cook for food and art? And then he was like, I have no clue what I can make in an hour. Yeah, most things I take, like when I make hash or gumbo, those are kind of all day affairs, you know? Okay, talk us through what you're doing so we can see. I'm just plating up a little bit. I'm getting ready to plate. Um, I'm gonna grab a different thing. This nice dark wooden spoon my, my friend David carved. It's one of my favorites. And this bowl my Uncle Joey made. He also made my garlic keeper and this. He's in Lawrence, South Carolina at the Square Roots store on the square there. Lawrence is a lovely town you should visit. That's awesome. So we're scooping a big helping of grits into this bowl made by Stephen Uncle. Talk us through what's happening now. Yeah, just getting ready. I mean, we are right at the finishing edge here. So we're gonna get ready to place some shrimp. So if I were serving this with guests or family, I would just uh, put it maybe in a bowl a little bigger than this, but uh, just kind of place it at the top here. And then I would take a little bit of the sauce, 
and just yeah, make a spoon for that. So you're kind of plating the master, like the main serving bowl. This wouldn't be for one person. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, this is uh, for a couple people here. Who yeah, you could do a family stuff. No, I'm gonna drive over and take a swig. Come on over. Just don't bring your COVIDity. Yeah, I, I won't come over. It's about social distance, guys. Stay home. Get away from me. Exactly. All right. Wait. Salt Bay. There he goes. My Turkish king, Salt Bay. And then I might put a little pepper on the top. Um, so what we've got is shrimp and grits. Wow. Give it up for Stephen Kratz. Yeah, there you have it. Are you going to take a bite? Are you going to let us uh, see you eat it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I got to Instagram that piece, but I'm going to just get some here in a spoon. Woo! Gotta let it cool down. Where's my parsley? Salt bay. Right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, this tastes like vacation to me. This is uh, going to the beach with my family. Mm. 100%. My mom also wants to brand your phrase you just said, come on, come over, but don't bring your covidity. You know what? You need some bread. If you were in New Orleans, you'd get Leidenheimers, but this Cuban bread will do. And, you know, this is where it's at right here. Sopping up the goodie with a pusher. That's where it is. I feel like if any time I've lived in Rock Hill, many times Steve and I have been setting up for events or cooking in the same vicinity. Mm -hmm. I'm more so he's cooking and I'm eating. And he'll hand me something and he's like, just eat it. And I trust him 100% of the time always. So. Yeah. If you, you got to use shrimp shells. That is such a rich shrimp flavor because of that stock. But anyway, cheers to all of you. I love you. Etc. Thank you so much for uh, local Rock Hillians, if you will. So give it up one more time for Steven Kratz in the comments. We're so happy that you joined us. Thank you so much, our sweet co-founder. Like I said, uh, Food and Art is not over. Tomorrow night at 5.30, we'll be back here on Facebook Live with um, Emily Doling. She'll be making an eggplant parmesan, which is going to be really exciting. There'll be some TV magic she told me about today, so you're not going to want to miss that. Also, if you would like to get tickets tonight to see Sarah Kennedy Irwin in her studio at The Perch, there's still time. So jump, jump on over to FridayArtsProject.org and grab your tickets. It's going to be a really cool conversation. The run through earlier today was exquisite. So uh, head on over there. And tomorrow night, we'll see Stephen again with John Hendricks, which is going to be awesome. You're getting nothing but thanks and love from the chat, Stephen. Uh, so we're very grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for raising, helping us raise money uh, to stay in the Getta Center here uh, for Friday Arts Project. And we'll see you at eight o'clock in the Zoom room. Thank you so much. <laughs>